or playing with their hair when they're talking to you, for example. There's also facial expressions, so blinking a lot or raising their eyebrows when they talk. Hello everyone, this is Olga, the Asia Pacific trainer here at Yes Supply, and I'm so excited to talk to you today about how to build rapport with your clients or other people in your life. Wouldn't it be amazing to have a very cool technique to help you build trust and confidence with your clients and a feeling of already knowing and liking each other or have the ability to use this technique to build a better bond and connection with anyone really. Let's go a little deeper into the elements of communication now. In NLP, when we build rapport, it goes a little deeper than just breaking the ice. Building rapport creates a feeling as if the participants like each other. So rapport is a process of responsiveness and not necessarily liking. It is the process of matching and mirroring someone very subtly, and I will explain further in a moment, so that they accept the suggestions that you give them as a coach and helps to establish that trust. We naturally do it in everyday life anyway, even if we don't know we're doing it. So here we can connect with our clients energetically and almost see things from their point of view, experience the things that they are experiencing to help you both understand each other. It's very, very powerful, but it's also very simple. Now, the three elements of communication and building rapport are physiology, tonality, and words. And you might find it really interesting to know is words are only 7% of the way we communicate, which means 93% of the way we communicate is our energy. So through our tonality and physiology. And the ways in which we build rapport is by matching and mirroring. We take note of all these little elements of communication, we pick up on all the really subtle things, and then we match and mirror our clients to create that feeling of likeness. So matching is doing exactly as they do. They raise their right hand, we raise our right hand. And mirroring is like looking in the mirror. So they might raise their left hand, so we raise our right hand. So either way, the subconscious mind picks up on all these tiny, subtle movements and thinks, oh, we're the same. And of course, we do this in a very, very subtle way that feels good to you. So the first element is physiology which makes up 55% of the way we communicate. It's the most important form of communication and not words. So physiology means paying attention to someone's posture, whether they're sitting up nice and straight, or maybe they're leaning a little bit to the side, or hand gestures. Some people really like talking with their hands or playing with their hair when they're talking to you, for example. There's also facial expressions, so blinking a lot or raising their eyebrows when they talk. And lastly, breathing. So paying attention if someone's breathing rate is a little bit faster or a little bit slower. So we can pick up on all these subtle physiological elements and match and mirror them, of course, in a way that feels good to you. So the next element is tonality, which is 38% of the way we communicate. So this refers to voice quality. We can communicate through our tone, or our pitch. So some people speak a little higher or a little lower. So you wouldn't necessarily mimic how high or low their voice is. You would just access a slightly higher pitch in your own range or a slightly lower pitch in your own range. And same as tempo. So some people like to speak a little on the fast side like me. So you can speed up the way you're talking to match a fast talker. Or you know, there are people who are a lot more chill than me, so you can slow down the way you speak a little bit too. So timbre quality means you can add a little rasp or sharpen the clarity of the way you are communicating or become a little more crisp in pronouncing some of your words. And lastly, we have words, which is only 7% of the way we communicate, but it is still very effective on that conscious level. Okay, so language covers things like predicates, which is how we see the world and how we process it internally and express it externally. How do we see the world? We see it through pictures, sounds and feelings. And the way we describe the world as we see it is through visual, auditory and kinesthetic language, okay, or even audio digital language. So you may hear someone say, I see a lot. I see what you mean. I see your point of view. So they are a visual person. Or if you hear, I feel you, I feel I understand, I feel like it would be better like this, then that person is kinesthetic or in their feelings. An auditory person may say a lot of, I hear you, 
That sounds great. So when you listen into the predicates your clients are using and matching them, that is a really great way to build rapport. And then there's language. There are also keywords and many other levels here, but in the coaching realm, for example, we'd use words like tuning in, manifestation, abundance. It's almost like that industry jargon that is a little bit unique and really resonates with people in that industry and just feels really familiar. But also like, you know how people like to throw around key phrases? So for example, for my son at the moment, everything is, oh mum, that is so satisfying. So maybe to relate a little bit more to him, I've thrown that around a little bit too, because you know, I still want to be the cool mum. <laughs> so you can also match and mirror words or key phrases that your clients use. There's also common experiences and associations. So they could be things like the weather or a local or global event. And there's also content sizes or chunk size. Some people place random punctuation or commas throughout their speech. So it might sound a little bit like that in chunks. So just to recap, Building rapport on a deeper level is all about picking up on the elements of communication, physiology, tonality and words, and very subtly matching and mirroring the client or person you want to build trust or a better bond with. Can you imagine how this might help you in all areas of your life, with your clients, personal relationships, other professional relationships when you're networking perhaps, and even romantic relationships? Again. I'm Olga from Yes Supply, and if you found this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe so you can keep up to date with all our new releases. If you have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the comments and we'll get back to you ASAP. Thank you so very much for spending this time with me.